the moment, aren't we? Let's hope that it, it, it shakes off us by the, by the weekend. In terms of predictions, me and David both went three out of four. We both um, didn't expect Castleford to play quite such a weak inside, uh, I think is, is fair to say. In the Super Brew, Alan leads the host Super Brew from David, who's second. Scoots, your third. Tim is fourth, and I am last. In the main Super Brew, Simon Lee stays top. And I couldn't see that a yellow cap was awarded this week, so I don't know what's going on, but I don't know. Hopefully, Super Brew sticks around and keeps keeps us going because the the fantasy league is a is a scratch, isn't it, for this year? <laughs> yeah. But thanks everyone who got in their fan views on those games. We will be looking forward to m- a lot more fan views, please, on the uh, on the upcoming games. Uh, in particular, any of the rearranged games that you're going to be going to. Um, send us your views on those because we'll only now get to see the Catalans Leeds game on telly, but of course the Challenge Cup final, which we'll be previewing in a little while. But before we do that, we're going to run through the other results from around the world of rugby league. <laughs> Other results time, and we'll start uh, as we typically do with the women's Super League. Um, St. Helens 78, Featherstone nil. Wigan 6, Leeds 28 in the battle of the previously unbeaten sides. Um, Leeds came out on top there. Wakefield 6, Bradford 46 in the televised game on, on Monday night on, on the Twitch. Uh, Wakefield, sorry, Warrington and York have been playing actually whilst we've been recording the show. I wonder if we can get any live updates on that Sarah I'm just going to do a little bit of a search um, which club do you think will be more likely to be updating there York I think York pretty good with keeping up with the women's super the women's matches out there Let's have a look. Warrington have done one tweet in the last hour um, at half time it was 24 nil oh. to York Uh it's 62 nil to York on the 72nd minute. There you go. Yep, Gracefield has just literally gone in to score. Uh, so I think we're safe in saying that that is a, a convincing York win um, yeah. in that fixture. Huddersfield versus Castleford was postponed. I think they're looking to rearrange that game potentially um, for midweek. So we'll we'll see about that. Um Lead to the last one. Oh, sorry, it's you to do the sanding, Sarah. Sorry, I was distracted by York then. Um, yeah, so it leads to the last 100% record. St. Helens are back up to second ahead of Wigan on points difference percentage, both on 83%. Middle of the table um, could tr- change with the wire York game, but at the bottom, Wakefield are still winless and yet to get off the mark. Yeah, I think that win will put York ahead of Castleford as things stand at the moment they're just ahead of Castleford which is a big move for them Um, Mm. but then it'll mean all the other clubs are the same going down Bradford have improved but still possibly second bottom I'm not sure anyway um, Championship round 13 sadly no fan views in on the championship this week which is a little bit disappointing but again I think we were all distracted by something that we thought might come home and didn't um Halifax 14 Whitehaven 4 Batley 12 Toulouse 32 London 50 York 20 so big bounce back for London there Newcastle 24 Dewsbury 12 Newcastle strong form continues Oldham 22 Bradford 54 Swinton 22 Sheffield 30 Swinton keep being competitive but they can't get a win and witness 10 Featherston 32 probably the two biggest tests that Toulouse and Featherston have had so far this year um, with those scores what does that mean for the stand-ins Sarah? So Toulouse and Featherston keep up their 100% records at the top Bradford a third on 75% Halifax and London next on 69 and 65% respectively Batley and 6th are on 58% Newcastle have 56% then Widnes and Sheffield both have 42%, followed by Dewsbury, then Whitehaven, York and Oldham, with Swinton winless at the bottom. Okay, dokes. But good to get a full round in, in the Championship. We didn't get a full round in, in League One, where it was around 10. Workington versus Coventry has unfortunately had to be postponed, and the, the London Scholars games bumped to the Friday Night Lights game the night before 
the Challenge Cup final down in London. But West Wales hosted Rochdale. It was 30 points to 18 win for Rochdale. So competitive stuff from West Wales. Do you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna check that that's right because I don't trust that. <laughs> uh, nope, that is right. So well done, West Wales, for being good competitive Ooh. there. Keithley 40, Barrow 12. Bit of an upset. Barrow's first loss of yeah, the season. Yeah, definitely. Good result for Keithley there. Yeah, and sacking the coach didn't work wonders at Hunslet. They went down at home 34 points to 24 to a resurgent North Wales Crusaders. Mm. Um, so, the standing. So, Barrow, they're beaten for the first time. They stay top on 85%. Workington, a second on 83%. Then, Doncaster on 72% before a drop-off down to Keithley on 55%. Rochdale and North Wales both on 50%. Coventry, uh, Huntslet have 45%. Coventry, 37%. Scholars, 22%. Then West Wales, bottom and pointless. Uh, into the NRL, it was an abbreviated round 17 as they um, as they build up to Origin Game 3. Uh, it was the Seagulls, 16, the Raiders, 30, with Josh Hodgson making 42 tackles and 170 metres, so a both ways effort from him. And Ryan Sutton with 192 metres. Yeah, Mark Butler got in touch after this one and said, routine win for Canberra in the end, doing the damage either side of half-time where they dominated possession and kept the scoreboard ticking over. Two tries where Sam Williams skipped through the line might get extra focus in Manley's video review. Manley did threaten a late comeback, but they had too much to do. It was the Rabbitohs 46, the Cowboys 18, with Burgess grabbing a try in 133 metres. And Alan Walker got in touch to say it was a halves masterclass to take the first try. Renault and Cody take it down the skinny side, seven and six together. Super slick hands and AJ turns it back for Taffer to touch down. So good. Seven to six, five times for tries, six times if you include Benji. Hat-tricks for both wingers. Too good. The legend of the West say Cowboys are hard. Bunny Wabbit's a dinner. Well, this dinner shagged the Cowboys proper hard. <laughs> so eloquently put. Uh, brilliant. Fan review of the week. Um, we've waited till the last fan review to get it nailed on. <laughs> yeah. Bulldogs 16, Roosters 22. Luke Thompson did manage 108 metres, though, in that losing effort. And Sharks 20, Warriors 12. Yep, so in the standings, the Storm and the Panthers both, both on 30 points at the top, with the Raptors chasing on 28, and Eels completing the four on 26. The Roosters have 22 points, the Sea Eagles 20, and the Dragons 18. The Sharks hold eighth on 16 points ahead of Knights on points difference. Titans, Raiders, and Cowboys have 14. Warriors and West Tigers have 12 points. And Broncos are on 10 points, and bottom-placed Bulldogs are on six points. Um, no, nothing from any any other action this week. So uh, that's all she told on the results. We're going to move into our guesses, and we'll focus a little bit on the Challenge Cup final, of course. <laughs> Right, Sarah, it's our first showpiece event of the year, uh, the Challenge Cup final in front of, hopefully, as close to 45,000 fans as uh, as possible. Um, it's going to be live on the BBC, Saturday at 3 o'clock, St. Helens versus Castleford. Shall we find out what the listeners thought might happen before we give our own guesses? Yeah, let's do that. So in the poll, um, we asked people to decide how this game was going to go um, and we gave four options either cast by loads cast in a close game saints in a close game or saints by loads because we know there will be a winner um, 12% thought it would be cast by loads 22% thought it would be cast in a close game so that means around about a third of people thought cast will win the game uh, 24% thought it'd be saints in a close game but 42 thought it'd be percent thought it'd be saints by loads so Lots of people thinking Saints with a comfortable margin in this game. Um, what do you think, Sarah? So I was one of those people that went for Saints by loads. But I think if Cass win, it'll be Cass in a close one. Um, 
these these matches are so hard to predict, aren't they? Form goes out the window. I think the Saints have got the big player, the big uh, game players, and I do think that they will have too much for Castleford. Fair enough. Uh, I also think that they probably will have too much for Castleford, but I want Castleford to win. Um, yeah, my preference would be for Castleford to win. <laughs> of course, as we sort of suggested last week, it, it won't be a new name on the cup, of course. These are two very steeped in history clubs, but it'll be the first time for a while that either of them have been uh, had the name on the trophy. So that's, that, that's good, but it's been longer for Cass, so it- I, I want them to win. Um, and they're not saints, so I want I want them to win. <laughs> Have they won since what was it? Eighty six. Eighty six is the last time that they won. Yeah, so they've only wow. won once in in our lifetimes, Sarah. Yeah. Um, I can I explain can I explain it beyond just prejudice? Why I want <laughs> <laughs> why I think Cass will win. Um, you say Saints have got big game players. I think you've. You're right there that Saints have got players who played in some big games. I think Cass have got a few players who played in some big games as well. Um, maybe not quite as often and maybe not quite as, as recently, but certainly they've got performers. And I think Cass might have more players who this could be their last chance. There's more kind of rest. You know, they've got a few over 30s in their squad, haven't they? Um, yeah. They're also losing their talismanic head coach. It's his last year with them, so there's a there's an extra reason to win there. Um, they haven't tasted that success, but I don't necessarily think that they will freeze on the big stage. Um, I just think that they've not been good enough to taste any final success uh, because partly because of Zach Ardaker's drugs ban, but um, back in 2017. But I, I, yeah. I do, I I do think. With Paul McShane, with Watson Millington, with Shenton, um, there's a a core there that won't be awed by the occasion. And if everything goes right, and Cass can be set up to do something late on, I think they will deliver late on. And I have a a whiff of a Paul McShane drop goal to win the match. Oh, you heard it first here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, you know, Watts was at Hull in 16 and 17, wasn't he? So it's not that long ago that he won at Wembley. So like you say, they do have players. I just, I think it's a bit more in the Saints team's DNA at the moment. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I'd love to see Cass win, I think. Yeah, uh, referee in the big match is Liam Moore, his second cup final in a in a row. Um, Tom Grant and Jack Smith will be running the lines with Chris Kendall in the video referees booth. I I, I think that's a fair call. I, I, I would say Liam Moore has probably been the most consistent referee this year, and he's certainly been, um, I'd say, confident in his decision making there was a game a few weeks ago where he didn't go to the screen very much and actually was proved to be right with if he didn't and i think he i vaguely remember us saying after the semi-finals that he'd put himself in the in the front seat after a better semi-final um than kendall so so yeah i've got no qualms with that as at all if nobody gets injured they'll be all right won't they <laughs> yeah um i i think I think he's earned another go around though. We, we, there was, uh, you know, I, I think he has been the best referee so far this year. Certainly, whoever the referee is isn't going to determine the outcome of the match, no matter what us as biased, blinded fans think. But um, I just thought it was worth mentioning. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's always. I know you have you. I know you Hull fans don't have much of a positive relationship with Liam Moore, but <laughs> but that, yeah, that, like... that runs deep. <laughs> Not that deep, just, you know, if he had stopped the match when a player was injured, things might have gone better, but there we go. His brother's the reserve referee in the uh, 1895 Cup final as well, so potentially uh, a big day for... Yeah, I saw that. ...for the Moore family. Um, 
do do we expect Cass to be hampered by this build up that the 